What's up guys? In this video, what I want to do is cover three examples that you can use to solve logarithmic equations when we only have one logarithm. And what we're going to do to solve those equations is exponentiate both sides. And basically what that means is raise both sides of the equation to a base that is equal to the base of the logarithm. And the reason why this works is because the rules of logarithms. So before we get started with our examples, let's just make sure we understand these basic rules. It's very important to review these rules and make sure that you have a full understanding of why and how they work. I'm assuming you have these basics with you, so let's just go ahead and apply them and see how they're gonna help us solve equations. So the main idea we have in this example is log base two of x minus one equals four. We need to solve for x, but it's inside of the argument for our logarithm. So we have to undo the logarithm before we can actually solve for x. It's kind of like the same idea if I had the square root of x minus one is equal to four. I can't add the one over to the other side until I undo the square root. So I need to undo the logarithm, meaning I need to look into what is the inverse operations of logarithms, and that is to exponentiate. So what we're going to do is we don't want to raise this expression, raise to any number. We want this to be the same base as our logarithm. So since my logarithm in this case is two, I'm going to raise that whole expression to a base two. So x minus one. And then again, remember, don't forget the cardinal rule. Whatever you do one side, you have to do on the other side. So that's going to be two raised to the fourth power. Now, using the rules of logarithms, this can now be expressed as an x minus one. You can see it's no longer inside of the argument. And now I just need to calculate a two to the fourth power, which is going to be 16, and then add one to both sides and x equals a 17. So that's the main idea that we're looking for. Now let's go and take a look at one that has a little bit more complicated of a solution. Okay, so in this example, you can see that again, we have a logarithm and our argument in here is actually a quadratic. But again, I'm not even going to worry about that right now. All I'm going to focus on is getting rid of this logarithm. If I want to solve for x inside of the logarithm, I have to get rid of the log. So I'm going to exponentiate on both sides. Now I'm not going to exponentiate as base two on both sides. So therefore, I'm going to exponentiate with a base three on both sides. And again, because now I can use that rule of logarithm, whereas this is now going to undo each other. And I'm just going to be left with x squared minus 5x plus 13 on the left hand side. So therefore, I'm left with a x squared minus 5x plus 13 and is now equal to nine. Now we recognize this is a quadratic equation, right? So therefore, to solve this quadratic equation, what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to set it equal to zero. And then I'm going to look into factoring or using the quadratic formula if I need to. So x4 equals zero, positive four. All right, what two numbers multiply to give me a positive four and then add to give me negative five. That can be a x minus four times a x minus one equals zero. And then I have an x equals four and an x equals one. Now it's very important with logarithmic equations, especially when we have more than one solution to make sure the solutions are going to work. So again, by plugging in a four and a one, I better get a 16. So when I just go ahead and plug these in, that's going to be a 16 minus 20, which is a negative four um, plus 13, which would be nine. That one works. If I plug a one in here, that's going to be a one. Um, that's going to be a negative four minus nine. So both of these solutions are going to work. So indeed we do not have an extraneous solutions, both of them do indeed work. Okay, so in this example, you can see there's a lot going on here. We have a logarithm that's multiplied by one half. We have a eight times the x inside of the arguments, and then we have plus three on the outside. The main thing we want to do here is whenever we're trying to exponentiate, we want to make sure that we isolate our logarithm. This rule of logarithm only works when it was just a logarithm all by itself. So I need to get rid of this multiplying by one half and adding three. It's okay for the eight x inside because again, that's inside of the logarithm. I'm going to solve for that once I exponentiate, but I I have to get rid of the logarithm before I can tackle the 8x. Before I can get rid of logarithm though, I have to have it isolate. So I'm just going to use my inverse operations. I'm going to subtract a three on both sides, and then I'm going to multiply by two. Okay. Now, hopefully you recognize here in the first example, I had a log raised base two. So therefore we raise it to the second power. In the third example, I had log raised base three. So we exponented with a base three. In this example, we have a log base four. So therefore I'm going to exponentiate with a base four on both sides. And now we just are left with a 8x is equal to a 16 divide by eight, divide by eight, and x is going to equal a two. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. If you want more examples of solving exponential equations, check out the examples and resources I have down below. If you absolutely love this video, feel free to go ahead and give me a super thanks. Give me a super thanks. I hope you're already subscribed and check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.